Yeah. The beautiful thing about power in your present is you'll never be alone. Mm -hmm. Um, He's always with you. There's nowhere you can go without him. Um, There's nowhere you can go where his love's not available. And when you receive that, no matter where you've been, what you've done, or what's been done to you, uh, the past is covered. Mm -hmm. It's forgiven. And it's a forgiveness for your past, and it's a forgiveness that lasts. And then the resurrection is about connection. You will never be alone. He will always be with Mm -hmm. you um, to love you, to guide you, to lead you. And sometimes you're going to go through difficult things in life. He's still there. Sometimes you're going to go through great things in life, and he's still there. Um, But it's, yeah, it's power for our present. Welcome to the Loving God, Loving People podcast, where we talk about what it looks like to follow Jesus in our everyday lives and how, in the end, all that matters is God and people. Here's today's episode. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. Chad, we just got done with, like, our Super Bowl weekend. It was Easter weekend. Uh, You're probably like, man... This is so great. And now Sunday's coming. We got to do this all over again. Doesn't stop. Never stops at Sun Valley every weekend. You know what preaching is? What's that? It's 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 you are laboring <laughs> over the sermon. You, I, you, I can't you, wait to hear the comments on you this. You spend years. You know, somebody, how long do you spend on that sermon? 50 years, bro. 50 mm-hmm. years. Half a century, my, Chad's been working life, on yeah. that. So, and, and then there's there's months ahead of time. You, you kind of knew what you're going to talk about. You're praying about it. The week of, you're really working on it. You're laboring on it. There are labor pains, right? <laughs> and then you birth it on the weekend. Uh-huh. And then you wake up Monday morning, and guess what? You're pregnant again. That's preaching. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Unless you're one of these people that just gets to travel and speak, and then you got you, like three talks, and yep, they're all amazing. Keep and, recycling them. People are all going, man, why can't my pastor speak like that? I'll tell you why, because your pastor speaks every weekend. <laughs> it's different. And when they go other places, people are like, wow, that guy's amazing. That's, that's a, right. That's incredible. Well, they got three talks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway. All right. What's your... Uh... <laughs> my life is so hard. I know, Chad. Hey, I'm, this I'm past, so sorry. This past weekend, uh, largest weekend in Sun Valley's history. Mm-hmm. Uh, amazing for all of you who give and serve. Uh, thank you for those of you who specifically served and our Easter services, uh, moved off your normal service, all of that to make room for people. Thank you. Yeah. It, was, it was a great weekend. So for decades, you've been doing Easter service, all but maybe one weekend in the last two decades at Sun Valley. And, <laughs> for uh, decades. Yes, that's, it's true. That's oh, how, yes, young Robert. That's, how we, that's how we measure time these days. Uh, what, it, what is like the more family tradition? Like, do you guys have Easter traditions? Do you guys like hang out, open Easter eggs? Is there some British thing that Katrina brings into the house that you guys do? Yeah. Um, well, and <laughs> this, is, this is, there's a tradition. Uh, and the tradition is uh, Katrina does Easter baskets for mm-hmm. the boys. Mm-hmm. And they do that. And then they send me a picture on Sunday morning uh-huh. with them with their Easter baskets. And uh, we've kind of stopped that tradition in the past few years because they're getting older, mm-hmm. right? And uh, I think we just give them a little bit of cash now. We just throw a little <laughs> cash at them. You guys had a had a moment where they're like, hey, Mom, Dad, we don't need the baskets yeah, anymore. Yeah, I don't want a chocolate bunny, yeah. right? How about an Andrew Jackson? <laughs> so anyway, um, so I come home, uh, like this Easter, you know, eat ham, take a nap. That's the Easter tradition. Uh, and then Katrina and I, the day after Easter on that Monday mm-hmm. – Uh, We have lunch together, and I usually go somewhere and eat something I'm not supposed to eat, and I eat a lot of it, and it's amazing. Yep. And we sit and hang out. Yeah. And that's that's fun. So the family thing is uh, they do that Easter uh, Sunday morning because my family usually goes to church on Saturday night Mm -hmm. uh, to make room for people on Sunday morning. And I get a picture of that. When I come home, we talk about it, and we eat ham, and I take a nap, and then Katrina and I have our kind of date day on monday love it so yeah. feed your body feed your soul and then back to work on tuesday that's it all right and again love it <laughs> gotta uh, give birth to another one so so this year you talked about and i don't and, need any emails from any women i i know i know there's no comparison <laughs> we love you all and mother's day's coming and there's deep appreciation so yeah. it's it's just a metaphor that's all it is yeah there's a comedian he talks about going to the hospital and they ask hey what number are you at you know zero to ten whatever yeah and he's like well i can't say ten because that's like you know giving birth to a child or whatever so he's like "Eh, nine you know that might be like a gunshot wound he's like eight eight's the highest you can go as a guy if you're going into the hospital or whatever and uh, the joke is always say eight because that's when they gave him the good meds and so my brother who was just having surgery uh on his brain he had brain surgery um uh, my little stepbrother and he's coming out of that i mean 
and that's excruciating pain. And he's like, yeah, I'm at like a six. Like he could barely talk because he just came out of brain surgery. And he's mm-hmm. telling him he's at like a six because he's tough as nails. Which means they cut a hole in his skull. Yeah. 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 They cut a hole in his skull, moved neck muscles, the whole deal, long procedure. And so I went to the neuro ICU and he's, you know, a little bit coherent and all that. I'm like, Josh, always say eight. <laughs> so his, <laughs> his nurse started laughing or whatever. I'm like, yeah, good for you, man. But okay, well, I got to ask you, what are, what are your Easter traditions? Oh man. So we, so my mom, Easter's like her holiday. And so she takes care of everything. Like she's got food. We're like, Hey, what can we bring? She's like, Oh, I got it. And we're like, like bottles of water, even like a salad, anything. And she, she takes care of it. You know she, what I always bring? What's that? Ice. There you go. You're welcome. Yeah. Go ahead. Excuse me. So she does all the, all the food. She does Easter eggs. Like she spends weeks leading up stuffing Easter eggs because there's a ton of grandkids yeah. and we invite people that don't have a place to, to go. And so there's like neighbors and other friends and they all show up to her house and we do an Easter egg hunt. And my big thing is I want to stretch that out as long as I possibly can. And I'm, I'm tall. And so I put Easter eggs up in trees in the hardest places to find it. And she's on kind of this horse property. So there's a lot of space to hide them. And, uh, and then I just keep telling the kids, you haven't found them all yet. And it keeps them busy for a good, you know, like hour. So yeah, that's our tradition. I like it. Yeah. And then we go home and, uh, yeah, do something fun on Monday and then back to work on Tuesday. Good deal. Yeah. So this, this Easter you talked about, and it's something that you've talked about in services before, but you really just honed in on it. Yeah. And and it's the the power of the gospel and, and what it brings for our past, present, and future. So kind of just give a, a quick recap, and then I want to unpack some things. Yeah. So for years, I've said when we talk about Easter, it's about forgiveness for your past, power for your present, and hope for your future. Mm-hmm. And that comes from uh, a, a, a sermon that I preached like 11 years ago. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I changed the wording a little bit to make it that simple just through the years as we talked about Easter. And so this Easter... I feel what I always feel. Oh man, it's a big holiday. I got to come up with something amazing and clever and all this. And then, you know, of course, when I get to my wits end, I decide to pray about it, which is always a good idea. And the Holy Spirit's like, you really think you can improve on the resurrection of Jesus? Mm-hmm. Right? And I'm like, uh, no, mm-hmm. <laughs> just give the message of Easter. So as I prayed about it, that simple message is profound. Mm-hmm. There is forgiveness for your past. The, the debt's been paid, which is amazing. Yeah. The word gospel means almost too good to be true, mm-hmm. right? I mean, mm-hmm. it's good news, but when you really look at the language, the most precise way to say it would be almost too good to be true. Mm-hmm. And yet it is, right? So uh, past is forgiven. Uh, there's power in the present because the resurrection is all about connection. He's alive and well, mm-hmm. and his spirit resides in those who put their faith and trust in him. There's a hope for our future. Um, this life, uh, there's going to be difficulties. But there's always hope in front of us. Mm -hmm. Uh, If it's not good, God's not done uh, because we're heaven bound. And that's the beauty of Easter. Yeah. So I want to I want to talk about this because you, you mentioned this. There's forgiveness for our past. Sometimes we get stuck in in our mind and there's some theologies that exist out there of, well, forgiveness for everything that you've done up until now. And then right before you die, if you don't get your last rites, you know, whatever, you don't uh, repent in that last moment, well, what about all those sins in between? And there's this understanding, because we're locked into time, and we're thinking about, you know, life as a progression of events one after the other. Well, God exists outside of time, and God knows every sin you have done or will do, and and he offers forgiveness, and it's received through faith, by grace. Um, and so that's that's true, but sometimes we get in our mindset like, oh, he's forgiven my past, but what about like... Now, talk to us theologically about what does that actually mean for us when we talk about hope for the future and all that and God being outside of time and the debt being paid in full? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. And I didn't get into all that this mm-hmm. past weekend. Uh, that's why we have the podcast. That's why we have the podcast. So let me quote a verse of scripture and then let's just think. Because mm-hmm. it's always a good idea when you read the Bible to think about what you read. Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, Romans 5.8. So I believe this is the NIV. It's probably the NIV from 1984 or whenever that was. Um, here's, here's what the verse says. But God demonstrated his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's applicable for all believers. But God demonstrated his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So if you want to know whether or not God loves you and how much he loves you, then you look at the cross. He proved his love. He demonstrated his love mm-hmm. in that. Uh, while I was still a sinner, he died for me. Well, that verse is applicable to me. And yet reality is Jesus died 
a couple thousand years roughly before I was ever born. Mm -hmm. So how did he prove his love for me that he died for my sin while I was still a sinner when I haven't been born yet? Yeah. Right? So we have to think about it a little bit. Well, that means that God operates outside of time. Mm -hmm. That that sacrifice on the cross from Jesus covered my life even 2,000 years before my life ever came to be. But my life did exist in the mind of God. He knew that I would need a Savior, so he died for me in advance. Okay? Well, if all that is true, that's outside of time thinking. What sin did he die for? Mm -hmm. If he died before I was ever born... I hadn't committed any sin yet. Well, what sin's covered then by that death? And when Jesus says in the gospel, according to John, in the book of John, when Jesus says, it is finished, to tell us die, the debt has been paid, well, how much of the debt? Mm -hmm. How much of the sin did he pay for? And it's the most righteous most profound, most powerful blood in the history of mankind. It's the sacrifice to end all sacrifices. The, the veil in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. He's the Lamb of God. He's the scapegoat. He's the temple that was destroyed mm -hmm. that came back three days later. He's the high priest. He's all of these things. He died for our sin. So what sin did he die for? Right? Um, the ones I confess— well, what about the ones I didn't even know to confess because I didn't know it was sin because I'm mm -hmm. just that ignorant for how sinful I actually am? Or in your mind, you went, man, that looks like righteousness. But the Bible would say, well, yeah, even that was a sad attempt at what would be God's standard of perfection. It's forgiveness for your past, and it's forgiveness that will forever last. Yeah. All right? We'll just make a rhyme out of it. Yeah. It's forgiveness for your past, and it's forgiveness that will forever last. Um, I'm 50 years old. I'm probably going to sin tomorrow and not know it. Uh, that sin is covered. Mm -hmm. um, it covers my sin from when I was a 12-year-old and lied to my mom, right? My debt has been paid because what has been covered is my very nature. Mm -hmm. And what Jesus gives to me is his righteousness. And his righteousness covers me for all time, mm -hmm. past, present, and future. I'll quote another verse. I'm preaching a little bit. You're just nodding, saying I amen am. to me right now. Well, I have a eyes. list of questions. I'm like, if I get to them, I'll get to them, but I'm just going to let Chad go here. Second Corinthians 5.21. <laughs> if you're going to memorize a verse, besides John 3.16, make it that one. Second Corinthians 5.21. He who had no sin became sin for us. So Jesus became sin. He was forsaken by God because he became our sin. He was absorbing the wrath of God on our behalf. For he who had no sin became sin for us so that in him, in Jesus, we might become the righteousness of God. Since it's the podcast, I'll give you the theological word. You excited, Robert? I am so excited. You already know the theological word. It's propitiation, and it's Jesus takes on all of our sin and imparts to us all of his righteousness. Mm -hmm. I'm going to quote the verse again. He who had no sin became sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. He covers me with his righteousness. So what sin is covered? <laughs> well, it's the righteousness of Jesus. What do you think that covers? Yeah. Well, all my sin for all time. Yeah. Yeah. It's forgiveness for my past, and it's a forgiveness that forever lasts. So there's this natural question that if you're, if you're listening right now, you might be going, oh, so does that mean that I just keep on doing whatever I want to do and keep on sinning? And Paul actually asks that question. You, you quoted Romans a moment ago, and he asks the question in Romans, like, oh, since God's grace is so amazing, should we just go on sinning? And then he answers his own question instead of it just being like, a, hey, food for thought. He goes, may it never be. You know? And he goes, no, that's, we're, we're abusing it at that point. So talk about how, do, how does that compel us, that reality of you've been set free from sin, from the consequence of sin. Um, now, now talk about power for your present, and what does that mean for us in the present, and what does that mean for us, and, and keeping it in the realm of, okay, so I don't have to live a slave to sin anymore. Like, I've been set free from that, uh, but it also means I can live free. And, and so talk, talk us through, what does that look like in the present? Because um, Paul asked the question, do we just keep on sinning then so God's grace can abound? And uh, it's a valid question that he asks. Yeah. So... If you're thinking, oh, wait a minute, he's covered all my sin for all time, awesome, I'm going to do whatever I want. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't understand any of this, which means you probably don't have it, uh, or you need to grow a lot in it, mm -hmm. right? 
So there's forgiveness for my past. There's power for my present. The gospel is not religious. The gospel is relational. Uh, The good news of great joy for all people is that we have a Savior who's Christ the Lord. For him to be your Savior, you have to trust him. Mm -hmm. I'm saying this quickly, so I'm going to slow down just a little bit. It's good news of great joy for all people. We have a Savior who's Christ the Lord. For him to be our Savior, we have to trust him. Trust is a relational word, not a religious one. That's what faith is. Faith, by definition, is a relational word. So if I put my faith in you, Robert, I'm trusting you. Mm -hmm. If I put my faith in Jesus, I'm trusting him. That is a relational thing, not a religious thing. Mm -hmm. And so he's our Savior, and he's our Lord. When I trust Jesus... I'm entering into relationship with him, which means he's my savior. He covered all sin for all time. And he's my Lord. He's the leader of my life. And so I'm putting him in charge. And and here's the thing when you begin to see this with relational eyes, not religious eyes. The very statement of, oh, all my sins covered, I'm going to go do whatever I want. That's actually a religious thought. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't fit in the context of the gospel because the gospel is not religious. It's relational. If your thought is, okay, wait a second, God became a man and died on the cross for me, and I talked about this a couple of weekends ago, and the very essence of who and what God is it was broken for me so that I might enter into relationship with him, and my response is, you did all that for me, awesome, I'm going to go do whatever I want, mm-hmm. then you don't understand this. Mm-hmm. But when you see the reality of God's love for you and the amazing grace that is imparted to you in and through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, the only response to a love like that is full devotion. Mm-hmm. That's relational. Yeah. When we receive communion, that's not a religious thing. It's a relational one. It's reminding us it's because of his radical grace for us, mm-hmm. right? We take his blood. We take his body. It's his radical grace for us that compels us to live a life of radical obedience to him. That is a relational thing. And so really the resurrection of Jesus. So the cross is about sin and the resurrection is about connection. And that connection is relational and it gives me power right now in this life and it gives me power forevermore because... I am a child of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. My brother is Jesus Christ who died and rose again, and he gave me his Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. You, you've said it this way before, that it's not the absence of religious devotion. It's not a religion. It's relational, but it's not the absence of religious devotion either. Jesus says, hey, and I'm paraphrasing here, uh, there's a way life works. Come learn from me. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me, and you'll you'll find rest for your souls. He's inviting us into a different way of looking at life, a different way of operating, and there's action behind that, and the action is going, okay, Jesus, I'm going to trust you with this thing. Whatever it is, Jesus, that you're guiding, that you're leading, and now he's given us his Holy Spirit, who's our guide, our helper, uh, in the here and now. So when you talk about power in the present, uh, supernaturally God empowers us by his spirit uh, to be in this relationship with him, to learn his ways, to walk in step with him, and and to align our lives with him. And so there is this, okay, I am putting forth effort when it comes to my relationship with God, because that's true of all relationships. Mm -hmm. There's effort involved in all my relationships. It's not just this passive thing. There's there's an activity to it. Yeah. And I used this example recently. It's like a marriage, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, When you and Lindsay got married and Lindsay stood there with you and made vows to love you, whether Mm -hmm. you're rich or poor, uh, whether you're healthy or sick, right, whether you're fat, whether you're skinny, no matter what happens, okay, she's going to love you until she dies. Mm -hmm. If your response is, awesome, I'm just going to go do whatever I want then. Yeah. No, there's there's a mutual exchange there. Of you going, you know what? She's going to love me like that. Lindsay, I'm going to love you like that, Mm -hmm. right? No matter what happens with you, I'm going to be here and love you. Because love compels us when we understand it. Love compels a response. Again, this is not a religious thing. Mm -hmm. It's a relational one. And the beautiful thing is Jesus uses that metaphor. Mm -hmm. Uh, The church is his bride. Uh, One day he'll come back and get us. And there'll be a wedding feast 
uh, it's the wedding feast of the Lamb who is Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. And and we'll celebrate this relationship. And I and I do want to acknowledge this: the the journey it is messy. We're going to do it imperfectly. There, there's not a standard of okay. Now that you put your trust in Jesus, you got to get everything right all the time. Um, just like one of my kids, you know, they're growing up and they're learning how to walk and all of that. They're not doing any of that perfectly, mm. uh, but I love them because there's a relationship there because they're my children because I'm their father. And, and so understanding too, it's not a burden. This relationship and Jesus, I'm going to trust you in the, these areas. It's a huge blessing that God loves us enough to say, now, now let me help transform you from the inside out and experience how life actually works and learn the ways that everything was actually created with this design and experience this. And, and in that, you will experience life abundantly, Jesus says, and uh, life to the fullest, that this is how you are actually created to live life. And so there's a blessing in that, not a burden. Um, but in that also, we're going to do it imperfectly. Yeah. The beautiful thing about power in your present is you'll never be alone. Mm-hmm. Um, he's always with you. There's nowhere you can go without him. Um, there's nowhere you can go where his love's not available. And when you receive that, no matter where you've been, what you've done, or what's been done to you, uh, the past is covered. Mm -hmm. It's forgiven. And it's a forgiveness for your past, and it's a forgiveness that lasts. And then the resurrection's about connection. You will never be alone. He will always be with Mm -hmm. you um, to love you, to guide you, to lead you. And sometimes you're going to go through difficult things in life. He's still there. Sometimes you're going to go through great things in life, and he's still there. Um, But it's, yeah, it's power for our present. All right. So last thing, as we're kind of wrapping up here, talk about hope for the future. And and what does that mean for me? What does that mean for those who are listening that have put their trust in Jesus? What is that hope? It means, Robert, that death is not an issue for you. Mm -hmm. Um, Death is not the end for you. It's the start of a new beautiful beginning. That death and its power has been destroyed and defeated on your behalf. It means that you have a hope for your future because this life and this world is as close to hell as you're ever going to get. It's all better from here. Um, A hope for your future means that you are forever safe in the love of God, that there will come a day for you when there is no death, no mourning, nor crying, nor pain, because all things will be made new, including you. Mm-hmm. And that's the hope that we have in him. Yeah, so good. All right, so Easter's over, but the church keeps on going. Here we go. Another weekend coming up. We're going to be talking. <laughs> we're going to be talking about uh, forgiveness in the upcoming podcast. This is something that I think every single one of us needs to hear. Uh, because it is so relevant, because we are imperfect people, because there will be moments that somebody offends or hurts or whatever. And so um, excited about where we're going to be going in this upcoming series. And if you haven't already uh, subscribed to the podcast, uh, I think these next several weeks are going to be really helpful, very practical, relevant for anybody who's a human being on this earth who interacts with other human beings. Uh, So you're not going to want to miss that. That's coming up. Chad, would you close us just praying for us as we uh, enter into this season? Yeah, let's pray together. Father, uh, thank you that there's forgiveness for the past. That the debt's been paid. Um, I don't worry about a bill that's already been paid for. (laughs) I can just let it go. Thank you. And thank you that that lasts forever. Thank you that there's power in the present. Right now you hear this prayer. I'm not alone. You're with me. And that's true for all who've put their faith and trust in Jesus. And I thank you that there's a hope for the future, that there's meaning, um, even in difficult times in this life, that it's all better from here. And uh, we cling to that. And we pray, come quickly, Lord Jesus. But we thank you for the living hope that you are. I pray over the next few weeks as we talk about forgiveness. So we learn how to forgive ourselves, how to forgive others, how to step uh, out of shame and into freedom. I pray that you would uh, guide us. And I think for a lot of us who are listening right now, this would be the most important series uh, of the year. And so maybe of our lives, um, set us free. And uh, we choose to trust you. Teach us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 
Thanks for watching this week's episode of the Loving God, Loving People podcast. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and click the bell so that you'll never miss an episode. And while you're at it, if you found value in this conversation, we'd love it if you would like this video, leave us a comment, and even share it with a friend. Doing that will help more people meet, know, and follow Jesus. And lastly, you are always welcome to join us each week for one of our services right here live on YouTube. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.